Content is the foundation for analysis. Analysis is the road to understanding, which leads to our next presentation, how our cloud content fuels analytical services that can help you meet your mission needs. So please welcome Lauren Rosenshine Bennett. Thanks, John. I'm willing to bet that pretty much everyone in this room, at one point or another, has had to geocode a spreadsheet of addresses. I'm also willing to bet that it probably wasn't as easy as it could have been. In December, we released the World Geocoding Service. It supports multi-line and single-line addresses in multiple languages in 105 countries, and it works across the platform. So let's take a look at using that World Geocoding service with some data that will help us understand our food supply. We'll start with USDA food hubs across the country. And we'll use the drag and drop functionality in ArcGIS Online. Now, I'm sure most of you have already seen this functionality, but what you may not know is that under the hood, we're using that World Geocoding service. And you don't just have to geocode addresses. We can look for place names, too. So let's take a look at the Washington Convention Center, where we are right now. And that place lookup is location sensitive. So if we search for Whole Foods, we'll find the Whole Foods closest to our location here at the Convention Center. Luckily, there's one nearby. But the World Geocoding Service doesn't just work in ArcGIS Online. Like I said, it works across the platform. In ArcMap, we have a spreadsheet of some of the farmer's markets across the country. So how do we geocode from inside of ArcMap? It's actually as simple as right-clicking on that spreadsheet and choosing to geocode addresses. The trick here is that we'll use the World Geocoding Service. It'll map those fields, get the relevant fields, and when we hit OK, it's sending that spreadsheet up to ArcGIS Online where we're taking care of managing that authoritative geocode addressing database and the geocoding itself. Now, this is great for us ArcMap users, but we know that there are tons of people throughout our organization who are a lot more comfortable here in Excel. So how do they geocode? Well, with the Esri Maps for Office add-in, it's as simple as inserting a map And when we choose to add Excel data to that map, it's automatically going to use that World Geocoding service. And again, it's going to send this spreadsheet up to ArcGIS Online. In this case, these are the locations of USDA certified organic meat processing across the country. And it's automatically going to add those locations to the map as it geocodes. Now, what if I had international locations in this spreadsheet? Traditionally, we'd have to manage multiple geocoders, one for each region of the world. And we'd probably need multiple data sets. But the World Geocoding Service takes care of that for us, too. And for the developers out there, you can take advantage of the World Geocoding Service also. You can build custom apps like this one, which can handle a spreadsheet like this in multiple languages, multiple formats, data across the world. global addresses. And instead of focusing on the geocoding service, you can build an app like this, which will take that table, which probably won't geocode because it's open. drop it into the map, and instead of focusing on the geocoding service, you can focus on building a, an application that has the form and the function that you want to build that focused application. And geocoding isn't the only type of service we're hosting. We're also hosting a number of network analysis services, like service areas and routing. So if we go back to our farmer's markets, we have a number of farmer's markets that we want to make some routine inspections of. So how do we route between them so that we can save time and money? We can use the Find Route tool, which we've hooked up to the World Routing Service. We've loaded in those farmer's markets, 
And we have some additional options, like we can choose a start time, time of day, day of the week. In this case, we want to do that routing this coming Saturday at noon. And when we do that, we're going to use this traffic data, worldwide traffic data, both historical and live. And the World Routing Service is already hooked up to take advantage of that traffic data. So when we hit Find Route, ArcGIS Online is quickly going to return to us that optimal route. We can do a lot more than just get directions. What if we wanted to analyze the accessibility to farmers markets in the DC area? Right from inside desktop, we can access a service areas service, which will let us either draw on the map, or in this case, point to our farmers markets. We'll do five minute drive times. We'll send those locations up to ArcGIS Online, and rather than having to manage a worldwide network data set that's constantly changing, it's going to return to us the results of that analysis, and we can see that we do have pretty good coverage in the DC area in terms of farmers markets. Now, up until now, everything that I've shown you is released. These are services that you can use right now, but there's more. We're working really hard to expand the availability of these services across the platform and we're working on some really exciting new services. In the March release of ArcGIS Online, we're adding that world routing service directly into the map. So you can do things like get directions from the convention center to that Whole Foods we found earlier. You can add multiple destinations, or you can optimize those routes. But the, the March release of ArcGIS Online is going to have something in beta that I think is a lot more exciting advanced analytics online. So if we go back to our farmer's market example, in the March release, every layer in your map is going to have a new option, the option to perform analysis. In this case, we want to analyze the spatial pattern of farmer's markets across the country. And we want to do that by finding statistically significant hot and cold spots at the county level. When we run that analysis, while it's running, we can take a look at some of the other things that we'll be able to do in the March release and in the June release. In addition to analyzing patterns, we can do things like summarize data, find new or existing locations based on sets of criteria, enrich locations with additional contextual information, use proximity tools, and some basic data, ma data management functionality. Now, in this case, when we ran that Find Hotspots tool, what it's doing is it's running a new tool called Optimized Hotspot Analysis. Optimized Hotspot Analysis will also be available in the desktop version in 10.2, but we really built it specifically with ArcGIS Online in mind. What it does is it takes the whole workflow of doing a valid hotspot analysis. We evaluate the data. We determine an appropriate scale for the analysis. We do any data aggregation that might be necessary, and ultimately return those statistically significant hot and cold spots. So really taking a lot of the guesswork out of the analysis and doing a lot of that hard work for the analysts, all from a very simple to use user interface, like we see here in ArcGIS Online. We're really excited about these new analytical tools in ArcGIS Online because they really help us fulfill our vision of building a true online GIS platform for everyone. Thanks, John. Thanks, Lauren.